The following program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries, celebrating 40 years of sharing God's unconditional love and grace. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack. Today, Andrew illustrates that knowing God is not just for the privileged, not just for those who found a formula. Knowing God is for everyone. Now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I am beginning a new series and I'm going to be talking about just knowing God. Very simple subject, but I tell you, I think that this is uh, kind of the bottom line. So many people that I minister to, they come and they are wanting God to heal them or they're wanting a touch from God. They need help in their home or their finances or something. And even though all of those things are valid and God does care about us and want to meet our needs, did you know if all you're seeking the Lord for is just to get your needs met, well then in a sense you are going to be dependent upon someone else helping you the rest of your Christian life. But on the other hand, if you come to know God personally, if you know what He is like and come to experience Him, then everything that God has and everything that God can do is available to you through knowing God. And I really believe that many times we are getting the cart before the horse, that we are seeking what God can give us instead of seeking God Himself. And my own personal testimony is that it was when I came to know God. And of course, I've given my testimony or, or parts of it many times on this program. I won't go back through all that. But when I was 18 years old, I was seeking to know what God's will for my life was. And for about 18 months, I really focused in trying to figure out what God wanted me to do. But in the process of studying the Word and then this experience I had March the 23rd, 1968, God revealed Himself to me. And I just began to know God. And out of that has grown everything. You know, I was in a denomination that didn't teach that God did miracles today. Uh, it didn't teach that God wanted to prosper you. As a matter of fact, uh, the denomination I was in basically taught that the poorer you were, the more holy you were. And they taught that God was the one that killed my dad when I was 12 years old, that God needed him in heaven more than I needed him, and that God was the source of all of the problems going on in our life. And there was just so many things that I was brought up and taught contrary to what I now know God to be. But you know, when I had this experience with the Lord in 1968 and God revealed His heart to me, immediately things began to change. I began to start understanding things. I got an insatiable hunger for the Word of God and through studying the Word of God, I came to realize the true nature and character of God. And I, it's my personal testimony that basically everything good that God has done in my life has come out of knowing Him. And I've seen my son raised from the dead, other people raised from the dead. I've seen God supply needs miraculously. I've seen God keep me on an emotional keel to where I'm not up and down like a yo-yo. Uh, I've had encouragement when I should have been discouraged. I've had faith when I should have had fear. I've had a lot of great things happen in my life, and it's my personal testimony that all of it really began with knowing God. Now, many people come along and see this, and they say, well, I want those results, and so what they do is go after the results and miss the thing that produced it. You know, in a sense, here's an illustration that maybe some of you remember the, um, you know, the story about the goose that laid the golden egg. What is it that you want? Do you want the golden egg, or would you like that goose that produces the golden egg. In a sense, that's what it's like. Knowing God is having everything that God is, and it will produce all of these other things that you need. But if all you're going after is getting the need meant, but then you go back to operating independent, living a life without really knowing the ways of God, knowing the things of God, well, then you're just going to have another problem after that and then another problem and you run and you, you pray and you get somebody to agree with you and you get some help, but you don't ever deal with the root problem. I tell you that knowing God is what everything is all about. And if you could really know who God is, 
and what his true nature and character is like. It would instantly give you an ability to recognize deception, to stand against the lies and the deception of the devil, uh, because Satan is always going to misrepresent God. And so many people are falling for his misrepresentations today because they don't know God personally. And you know, in the Old Testament, people knew God to a degree. There was some of the major characters, like Moses, who knew God. Matter of fact, Moses over in Exodus chapter 33, after being up on the mountain and after seeing the glory of God, getting the Ten Commandments given to him and everything, Moses said, God, I want to know you. Show me your ways and reveal yourself unto me. Now, he had already known God in a way that basically nobody else on the face of the earth at that time knew God, and yet he was crying out to know God more. Paul said the same thing in uh, Philippians chapter 3. I'm going to be dealing with those scriptures quite a bit and showing you some things that Paul said. But after decades of serving God, Paul was saying, God, I want to know you in the power of your resurrection. See, knowing God isn't something that you ever obtain to. God is infinite. God is higher than us. In some ways, it's a process that you never finish, but at least you can get started and you can begin that process. So here's examples of people all through the Word of God that after decades of walking with God and knowing God more than most people of their generation, they were wanting to know Him more. You know, once you begin to really know God and have relationship with God, it becomes addictive. It's like God is so awesome. He is so awesome that once you get exposed to Him, you can't get enough of Him. You just want to know more. And God is infinite. We are finite. It is impossible to fully understand, to fully comprehend everything, to know every in and every out that there is to know about God. But I tell you, it's a wonderful pursuit. It's a glorious pursuit to even pursue it. And that's what I want to spend the next few weeks talking about is just about how you can know God. You don't have to depend upon me to tell you how to know God and tell you about the things of God. You know, I got an email I read just last night, and the person was saying how that the teaching that I've been doing over television has just changed their life, and they were giving a good testimony. But the thing that really blessed me, they said, but the most important thing is you've taught me how to find out through the Word of God what God is like for myself. And they were basically saying that they are looking forward to the day that they won't have to say that Andrew Womack said or quote some other minister and say this. But he says, I am beginning to know God in a way that I never have. And it is becoming personal with me. And, you know, that just thrills me. That thrills me. I am really not looking to raise up a, a group of people who are, are Womackites or whatever. I'm not wanting people to just follow what I say. But I am praying that people would take the truths that God has shown me, that they would take this. It would change and, impl and augment and uh, make their personal relationship with God deep and, um, you know, productive. And then they would get to know God themselves. That's what I pray for. And this is what it's all about. And so I'm going to be sharing with you about how important it is to know God and about uh, what that will produce in your life. Then we're going to talk about how it is that you come to know God, how it is that you develop this. How do you get a revelation? And one of the things that I'm going to be saying in this series, and I really want to just say this up front, and then I'll be sharing a lot of scriptures that will verify this, is that God wants you to know Him more than you want to know Him. I really believe that. I believe that this is what the heart of God is. God is wanting to know you. Of course, He knows everything about you, but I'm talking about He's wanting an experiential relationship with you, and He is wanting to reveal Himself unto you. He wants personal relationship with you. God is much more motivated to have personal relationship with you than you are to have personal relationship with Him. Most of us get so busy and occupied with the things of this world, we only turn to the Lord when our back is against the wall, when we need something. And that's one of the reasons that our back gets against the wall so often and that we have so many problems is because we basically go on our own course and live our own way until we make such a mess out of things that it's beyond our ability to fix it. And we go running to God and ask Him to help. 
If we would come to know God and put that as the central thing in our life, then you wouldn't make as many messes because God will direct you and show you. It says that he will warn you of things to come, that he will direct your paths. God will supernaturally bless you so that you won't have to constantly be like a yo-yo up and down and from crisis to crisis. If you know God, it'll give us stability to your life. It'll prevent problems. It will enable you to weather and go through the problems that you're dealing with. It's all about knowing God. You know, if you were to ask students in our Bible college here, matter of fact, I've actually had them while I was teaching. And uh, like, for instance, I have one class I entitled Longevity in Ministry. And I start off by just talking about how many ministers fail in the first five years. And, and the odds are it's like 80% of ministers that go into ministry fail within the first five years. And then those who stay, 80% of those are close to being burned out, ready to give up. So that means that only about 4% of ministers are effective and really enjoying ministry after five years. So I show them that the odds are stacked against you. But here is how you last a long time in ministry. And you know the number one thing that I have down? It's just personal relationship with God. If your personal relationship with God is strong, everything else works. And then we go on and we talk about relationships with other people. We talk about, you know, having to set priorities and put rest. And there's a lot of other things we talk about. But really, if all you had was a vibrant relationship with God, it will sustain you through whatever it is that comes your way. And every class that I teach, basically, that's the first step. It's the most important step. If people would just really grab hold of this one truth and have a personal, vibrant relationship with God themselves, then you wouldn't need all of the other steps and things that we always talk about. God would direct us and guide us. I'm telling you that knowing God enables you to succeed. And... Again, my life is a great testimony of this. I mean, I'm a person that basically doesn't have any skills, talents, charisma. I don't have anything in the natural that has set me apart and has allowed me to do the things that God has been doing in my life. But you know the one thing in my life that I really consider to be the, the primary thing, the foundational thing that God has used to touch other people and to bless them is that I came to know God, started in 1968, and I've been developing, and I, through my relationship with God, I am able to take things that God has shown me and that are working in my life and share with other people. And that's really the only reason that God uses me is because of the things that I've come to know Him over. My relationship with God is the only thing that is working to, that has uh, allowed me to reach out and touch people's lives. And I believe it's the same with every person. Let me share a passage with you out of Jeremiah chapter 9. And this just kind of summarizes some of the things that I'm going to be saying throughout this series. In Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23, it says, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. You know, that is a pretty powerful passage of Scripture. And this is something that if we would sit down and be honest and really objectively analyze ourselves, how much of our life is boasting in the fact that we know God? know him in an intimate way rather than it says don't let the wise man glory in his wisdom now just be honest think about this in yourself and with other people how many people are bragging about the things that they know how many people you know are talking about their degrees they frame them and put them on the wall and they take great pride in all of these kind of things and i'm not saying it's wrong to uh, have accomplishments and and to use those things, but I'm saying in a relative or comparative sense, how many people actually glory in God and their relationship with God more than they glory in their uh, education, in their wisdom, in all of the things that they've done that have proven their wisdom? It says, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. You know, in our culture today, our athletes and stuff, man, people... Uh, 
at uh, the Super Bowl and at the playoffs, basketball, and all of the different sports and things that go on, man, people are talking about they're the greatest, and they're talking about their might, their ability, their skills. They glory in this. There are people that are known for what they've done in the physical, natural realm. But you know, when we stand before God, I don't believe God is going to be impressed by anybody's Super Bowl ring or by their baseball stats, whether they, you know, had the most home runs or whatever. All of these things that people glory in and are putting emphasis on, and they put these people on the covers of the magazine, and they talk about their accomplishments. When we stand before God, that stuff is going to be so trivial. It's going to be so unimportant. You know, these scriptures are basically saying that here in this life, we don't have to wait until we stand before God and all of a sudden we get a revelation of what was truly right and wrong. This is telling us what is important. It says, don't let people glory in their own wisdom, in their own knowledge that they've accumulated. You know, people always want to be called doctor this or something. They want everybody to know what they've obtained. And I really believe that that goes against what Jesus was saying, don't let any man here on the earth call you father or rabbi or master, all of these things. Again, I'm not saying that I wouldn't call a person doctor, but I'm saying that the emphasis should not be on your accomplishments. If you know God, that is the most distinguishing characteristic in your life. And I'm talking about not just knowing who God is, just having somebody told you and you know that he exists. But I'm talking about an intimate working relationship with God. If you know God Almighty, that is the greatest compliment. That is the greatest asset that you could ever possess. That is greater than winning the Olympics. That is greater than having, I mean, a string of degrees after you. You could have 32 degrees after you and still be frozen, <laughs> man, if you're dealing in Fahrenheit. He says, don't let any man glory in his wisdom. Don't let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Again, our society is, this just shows you how far removed we are from the proper value system. Because I can guarantee you, who is it that our society is glory in, exalting, glorifying, esteeming? Who are the people? It's talking about the rich. It's talking about the athletes, the people that have might and ability that in relative to other people excel and they show that they're better than other people. It's people who have all of the education and the degrees after them. And we are doing the exact opposite of what the Lord instructed through Jeremiah in these verses. We are glorying in our wisdom. We're glorying in our might, in our physical powers and ability. We're glorying in our riches. We are putting those people uh, you know, on the forefront those are the people that people look up to today and idolize and glorify. And then we've developed a new segment that uh, I don't even believe that the Bible ever foresaw or predicted, and that's our entertainers, actors today, who do nothing of any value, really, except just to entertain. And most of it is not a godly type of entertainment. It is uh, promoting demonic values and just... I mean, they live and have the morals of animals. They live like animals, and yet, man, we have these great uh, things where we have the Oscars and, and the Globe Awards and all of these kind of things and render glory and honor to people that if you were to put all of their integrity into a thimble, it would be nearly empty collectively. Now, I'm not against individuals, but I'm just saying that as a whole, we have glorified people because they're on the screen and we make them as if they're somebody special and we want to be like them. I tell you, that is just so misplaced. It says, don't let the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord. You know, there are some of you that don't have all of the riches and all of the, you haven't won the Olympics, you haven't got a, a Super Bowl ring on your hand, you haven't accomplished some of the things, you may not live in the best house, drive the best car, all of these kind of things. And so often you get to feeling insignificant and feeling like, what good is my life? But if you know God, if you've been born again, if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, 
if the Holy Spirit has revealed himself to you through the Word of God, and if you understand the things of God, if you understand that God loves you and is not dealing with you based on your performance, but is extending grace and mercy towards you, you know what? You have a treasure that is more than all of the athletes, more than all of the actors, more than all of the rich, more than all of the wise people of this world. You have something that is going to last throughout eternity, plus it has the ability to give you a quality of life here in this life that people who don't know and understand God could never experience. And I tell you, I just feel like somebody needs to be saying these things. That's the reason I'm on television saying this, because again, our world system today is saying just the opposite. They are glorying in everything except knowing God. I'm saying that knowing God is the greatest thing that could ever happen. And I'm going to be talking about this. This first week, I'm going to be just showing you how important it is to know God, how that everything that God is, has, and can do for you really comes through personal relationship with Him. And if you could get this point, and if you could place the proper value, if you could do like it says here in Jeremiah chapter 9 and in verse 24, you start glorying in. The word glory means to render or esteem glorious, to magnify, to, uh, to just put worth and value on. If you could start truly valuing knowing God, and understand what that does and what opportunities it opens to you. If you begin to place the proper value on that, I guarantee you it would just transform your life. It really would. You know, just um, this last week, we had a major breakthrough in our ministry. And uh, we have now been accepted just for a once-a-week program on the largest Christian network in the U.S., at least three times, maybe five times as large as any other network in the U.S., it nearly doubles our television outreach. And I mean, it's a major breakthrough. And um, it happened on like a Thursday or something. It was Monday or Tuesday of the next week that I had one of my employees just run in. He had just heard about it, and he was so excited. I mean, he was jumping up and down, and he's, man, this is awesome. This is changing everything. We're going to reach so many more people. And I agreed with him, and I said, yeah, I'm excited. And he says, but you don't act excited. He says, why aren't you jumping up and down? Why aren't you doing something? And anyway, it's a long story. I had not got time to give you the whole thing, but basically it came down to this. You know, I said, you know what? I'm excited about it, but the thing that really excites me is knowing God. And I said, I knew God before this opportunity came up. I'm going to know God after this opportunity. And I said, when, when God is the focus of your life, when he's the center of everything you're doing, it doesn't matter what else is going on. It just really pales in comparison to knowing God. It gives a stability to your life. And I'm going to be sharing some things with you that I believe are going to make a huge difference in your life. So I really want to encourage you to uh, listen in to this entire series and also to take advantage of the materials we're offering. I'm offering some brand, a brand new teaching on this. This was taken from a, a gospel truth seminar that I did recently talking about knowing God. And I tell you, there's some powerful truths in here. So if you'll listen, our announcer is going to give you information about how you can get this teaching. And I encourage you to please take advantage of it. And then join me again tomorrow as I continue our teaching on knowing God. Andrew's five-part teaching titled, Knowing God, was captured live at a recent Gospel Truth seminar. It's available in a CD or DVD album for a gift of 16 pounds or more. For the CD album, ask for number T1058 or request the DVD series T3203. You can also get Andrew's teachings as seen on TV by asking for DVD album number T1058 when you send a gift of 16 pounds or more. The first teaching in the audio CD album, The Importance of Knowing God, is also available for a donation of three pounds or more. We encourage everyone to send a gift, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this first CD free of charge. Request teaching number TK141 when you write or call and we'll be pleased to send it to you. 
I'd like to encourage you to get these materials that we're offering on this teaching about knowing God. This came from a seminar that I did recently. There's five parts to this. And I think it's the third teaching in this series is, I believe, one of the most important things that I've ever taught about just how to know God by faith. This is a uh, teaching that I promise you would transform the way you relate to God. And I really believe it would be a blessing to you. So we have the information on our screen how you could call or write. I want to encourage you to please get these materials. I believe it will make a tremendous difference in your life. Our web address is awmi.net. You can order ministry materials online 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Or you can use your credit card to order by telephone. Our helpline number is 719-635-1111. Again, that's 719-635-1111. Helpline hours are from 4 a.m. until 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Again, that number is 719-635-1111. If you prefer to write us, our address is Andrew Womack Ministries, Box 3333, Colorado Springs, 80934. We hope to hear from you today. I'd like to encourage you to go visit our website. We have that address on your screen, and I tell you, we have one of the most um, powerful websites of anything I've ever seen. I get comments about how user-friendly it is. I have hundreds of my teaching available for free downloads, and there's literally been people's lives saved by having all of this teaching material available to them free of charge. We have our living commentary there. I have about, I think it's eight years or more of our television programs that you can view right there on the website. We have about 10 or 11 years worth of my radio programs there. It's just a wealth of information, so please join us on our website. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. He will be in Colorado Springs, Colorado for the 25th Annual U.S. Ministers Conference, September 29th through October 3rd. He'll also be in Gosforth, Newcastle upon Tyne in the U.K. on October 18th through the 19th and in Buxton, England for the annual AWME Ministers Conference, October 20th through the 22nd. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, call our helpline or visit our website at awme.net. We also would like to point out Andrew's teaching, Discover the Keys to Staying Full of God, is now available in book form. You can order your copy today for a gift of seven pounds or more to the work of this ministry. Visit our website or call our helpline for more information. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for more gospel truth. If we could experience the love of God instead of just have mental assent to it, then we would have the fullness of God operating on the inside of us. Well, I tell you, if the fullness of God, if that won't meet what your need is, then uh, nothing will. 